All right, so now we are on part two of our logistics for preparing yourself for full-time travel. And in this video, what we are going to be talking about is the downsizing, becoming kind of a minimalist packer, and just all the steps are involved to get going on that. So I think one of the first things you need to do is get mentally prepared mm -hmm. to not having a lot of stuff. Yeah. And for a lot of us, it, it was a burden that uh, was kind of pulling us down. So when I got rid of all my stuff, it felt fantastic. Yeah. It felt great. Now, some of us might not be willing to do that. So I would mentally prepare yourself for having not very much stuff. Right. And it's also mentally preparing for what comes from you know, you're you're leaving family, you're leaving right. friends. And so you really have to find talk through all of that, go through all of that process to make sure that you're ready to make that step, you know, because we're gone for four or five months at a time mm -hmm. away from everybody. And I know for a lot of people, that's a big concern of how do you do that? You know, because I do, I have grandkids and I have children that are here right. and you have children around the, around our con the, country, around the country, but yeah. you know, I mean, so you really have to go through that process and that's your number one first step is just Talk it through either with yourself in your head and go through any of those questions and, and everything that you might have about this process. So with that, kind of get your mind working towards a minimalist lifestyle mm -hmm. and kind of accepting that, accepting the fact that you may only have four shirts, mm -hmm. uh, two pairs of shorts, that type of thing, yeah. and really embrace it. Yeah, and I think that that's a hard embrace. At first, it sounds um, it's, a, it's sounds overwhelming. Yeah. You walk into your closet and you look at it, and you have all this selection of stuff. Um, but I kind of remember as we had done some of that downsizing process, you look at it and it's hard to get rid of, but boy, when it's gone, it feels so good. Yeah, it's like, why didn't I get rid of that years yeah. ago? Yeah. yeah, and so now, you know, just kind of going fast forward of where we are now on that, um, just to kind of give you hope <laughs> is that, right. <laughs> you know, we have been doing it for two and a half years and now we are so used to only having a couple items right. that, you know, when you come home, you buy a couple new things to wear or whatever, but you almost get annoyed with having a selection because it is very easy when yeah. you're traveling. You know, it really days. is. And, you know, it, it goes along with, with the materialistic uh, things that you think you need but you really don't mm -hmm. need. So, so take those um, experiences and, and start thinking about what cool things you can do mm -hmm. rather than what cool things you have. Right, yeah, really embrace that yeah. uh, experience over possession kind right. of thing. Yeah, so I would say that we've done quite well at that. We now yeah, really I, enjoy- I like doing cool things mm -hmm. and not having cool things. Well, <laughs> we don't even have the option to have cool things anymore. We don't even have the option to have cool things. <laughs> when, we're, when you're traveling, that is one of the downsides is that you know when you have gotten rid of your home or you've gotten rid of uh, the big bag that you're carrying along with you and you're only right. carry on, you don't get to buy the stuff. So instead, put that money that you would have done, take cool pictures uh, of all those cool things, and then go do experiences. Yeah. You know, those memories yeah. stay with you forever. Yeah, so. go snorkeling in Thailand or something mm -hmm. like that. That, that was pretty cool. That, I still remember that. It's still one of my top mm -hmm. moments. Um, for those of you that have been watching, I avoided those sharks that were down there. Just uh, not gonna go there. But, but yeah, the, the <laughs> memories are priceless. They are. Now the next thing that you want to do is you really kind of want to just assess your your possessions, right? So if you have been living in a family home for a really long time, obviously this assessing process is going to take a little bit longer. Uh, we had already started to downsize prior to, and so we had kind of gone through already a lot of that memorabilia, the photo albums, everything like right. that but kind of start assessing that, deciding what you're gonna really want to keep, you know, what you're, what do or die you're willing to not get rid of, right? So kind of start to make those plans. Yeah, if you have golf clubs you wanna keep, um, fishing gear, whatever your hobbies are. Letterman's jacket. My Letterman's jacket, I'm keeping that, <laughs> I'm keeping that. Now, some things you're gonna wanna keep. Mm -hmm. Figure out where they're gonna go. I got rid of my golf clubs, I don't golf that much anyway, mm -hmm. sold them. Carrie got rid of her uh, her bike. Uh, yeah. You know, just things that we knew we weren't going to use. We went ahead and got rid of them. Other things we decided to keep, like my Letterman's jacket. But we also have a wintertime clothes mm -hmm. that we keep. A bin of just papers that we th we think we might need taxes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Find a place for those things to go. A closet in a family member's house is where we have them. Mm -hmm. um, but access your belongings and decide. Yeah, really just you're really just at this point kind yeah. of getting a feel for 
how much you're going to have left right. <laughs> when, you know, what are you deciding you're not willing to get rid of? So, because that kind of goes on to your next steps after this. Yeah. So after you've decided those, now start that decluttering process. So you're now going to start doing that whole, yes, I'm keeping this. Okay. We've covered that part, right? <laughs> but now you got to get rid of a lot of stuff, you know, I mean, a lot's accumulated over the years, you know, so you're making, we were making trips to Goodwill. We were delivering stuff to family members, yeah. homes that wanted it. Um, you know, and so you're just doing that, that final declutter process and getting rid of as much as you possibly can you dump a few times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And when we're talking through these processes, we also understand this is months of planning in advance. This is not something that you two weeks prior to going start this process. We really recommend that, you know, especially like we said, if you're in a family home that you are starting this process a good six months, eight months right. beforehand. Right. Yeah. So now once you've streamlined all your possessions, you know what you're getting rid of, you know what you're keeping. Mm -hmm. If you're not keeping your family home, consider moving in to a smaller space. Mm -hmm. We moved in to apartments separately, and then eventually we moved in together. So we downsized mm -hmm. a couple of times. We downsized considerably. And yes. so we were really narrowed down and we had a really teeny tiny closet uh, that we shared with each other. Plus there was zero storage closets right. in the entire condo that we were living in. So you didn't have even a linen closet to put towels and right, stuff. It was right. the strangest thing. It was a nice place too, but anyway, <laughs> so downsize because it really is going to each step that you make of downsizing in a process makes this whole thing a lot easier to do than trying to really face doing it in all one lump. Right. When you are finally ready to leave, mm -hmm. it's done. Right. So now comes the next step of you are ready to be done with a place that you're in. Say you've sold your home, you are now ready to move out of condo apartment or whatever that you're in at the time. Are you putting stuff into a storage locker? Did you get rid of everything that you needed to get rid of? Or in our case, we just chose to keep a few bins of, like we said, winter clothes and paperwork right. that we needed to keep and stuff like that. We have those at my daughter's home. Um, so those are your kind of final steps that you need to take. Um, is make all of those arrangements of what you're going to I would probably advise against if you're thinking the storage locker route. Um, for some people, this might be the only way you convince yourself to do it because you really don't want to commit to getting rid of everything. So maybe say to yourself, okay, we're going to commit to six months of a storage locker. Right. But this, right. it's expensive. We've we heard stories about people doing the whole storage locker thing. Um, recently, we've heard these stories. And they regretted it. Mm -hmm. They were like, well, paying a monthly payment on the storage locker. They come back after six, eight months of travel. They clean the locker out and get rid of everything. Mm -hmm. So they should have just done it in the first place. Um, but, but yeah, and that was also a headache for them because yeah. they were home for a short period of time and they had all this work to do. Yeah. So, so do it beforehand. Do it before. And the thing I think we always looked at is even now. So we've only been traveling two and a half two and a half years. Right. And a lot of the things that say we had beforehand, now that we have lived such a minimalist lifestyle, um, we look forward to the time when we do end up finally getting another place, wherever that is, that we would probably get such simple things. It'd be like yeah. the kitchen would be just what you need. It yeah. wouldn't be every drawer filled with stuff. So yeah, I think that the starting over process when you're getting rid of everything seems scary, but now it's a, in a way kind of exciting because you do get to start fresh and new. Right. Yeah. Right. So now that some of you have made those decisions, mm -hmm. there's others of you that might think, well, I want to keep my home. Mm -hmm. I want to rent it out. I want to uh, use it for an Airbnb. I've got a property management company to help take care of it. Some of those belongings can go in a locked closet of your mm -hmm. own at your own place. You can come back to uh, once every three or four or five months, however long you decide to travel. That is a great option if you can afford to do that. Mm -hmm. We decided against it for the simple reason we'd already sold our homes mm -hmm. and we were living in, an Airbnb, in a condo uh, before we made the decision to, to travel. But with that being said, we both owned homes for mm -hmm. a long time and we didn't want any part of it. We didn't want no. the maintenance. We didn't want broken pipes in the wintertime. We didn't want to hire a property management company. We didn't want to hassle with any of that. Well, and I had been renting out my home uh, right. for a couple years. And, you know, during that time, you know, you did deal with, oh, the renters gave notice, they're leaving. And then, the, and I did have a property management company, but you're still being contacted by that property management company. Yeah. You're being contacted every time the, the um, renters have a problem or something goes wrong. You really have to ask yourself to what level you want to deal with those things. Because even though you have property management company, 
you're the one still getting the phone call because you have to approve any of the expenses right. or any repairs right. being done. And I know that we've talked about that many times because people have asked us that question of why didn't would, you do this? Right. Would well, we've we done that? Want to. We've never, ever once regretted yeah. making those decisions because we just know that when we are 14 hours away in Southeast Asia, I do not want to get a phone call in the middle of the night and having to be dealing with, oh my gosh, I have a broken pipe or whatever right, and all right. kinds of reasons. So there's pros and cons either way. Mm -hmm. You're still going to have to figure out what you're going to keep and what you're going to get rid of. So make sure you do that well ahead of time. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next part of it, which is your minimalist packing. So you have downsized, you've gotten <laughs> rid of a lot of stuff. Yes. And uh, we had advised you to not make the mistake we did, but you probably will still make it because I feel like it's one of those mistakes that everybody has to make on their own yeah. and then adjust accordingly to what works for them. So we got completely done, got rid of everything. And like we have mentioned many times before, we had our medium check bag. So not even a huge check bag, but we had a medium check bag. We had our under bag uh, or our uh, carry on bag and our under seat bag. We felt like we were like really minimalist we, we, packing. You said it perfectly that everybody needs to make this mistake. Mm -hmm. Everybody packs differently. We packed a certain way out the gate that we thought was perfect. Mm -hmm. Cause we're brilliant. We're we, like, we look at this it. little amount this of stuff great, we have. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we, were, we were dead wrong. Yeah. You'll make the same mistake. Try not to make it as poorly as we did. Yeah. Kind of make a mistake. Don't make a big mistake. It's kind <laughs> of a mistake. But get that packing list on our website and check that out. And That's at least, a great starting yeah, point. Just start with that start so that you just that. have a good idea of what to, you know, and then add on to that the more room that you have. Or subtract from it. Yeah. It'd really, be a, really get crazy. It would be really crazy. <laughs> Some minimalist packing. Mm -hmm. Now, again, we made a mistake and then we kind of made a mistake and now we think we've got it down. We're pretty good at it now, but we assess what we need and how much of it we need. Me, I need about four t-shirts, three pairs of shorts. Mm -hmm. That's about what I need. And I need five pairs of underwear. We can't forget that. <laughs> you need multiple you pairs need of multiple that. I take more than that. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, when you're looking at what you're going to be putting into your bag, there's a few things to kind of keep yeah. in mind. You want to make sure that you are, where are you traveling to? So it's a lot easier for us to travel very minimalist and, and super small when we're, say, going someplace yeah. like Southeast Asia, where no matter what time of day it is, it's 90 degrees or warmer. So you're never carrying anything warm with you uh, except for maybe because you're in air conditioning when you're in your like in your right. Airbnb. So you need to assess what the temperature is going to be, where you're going to be traveling. The other thing we always look at, I used to look at things and I didn't put near as much emphasis on like buying something and feeling it on the hanger. Like how heavy is it? So if it's heavy, as soon as I pick it up, doesn't matter how much I like it, I'm not going to even try it on and look at it. She'll buy it, bring it home and take it back is what she'll do. I can do that now, when I'm home. I don't do that elsewhere. Yeah. One thing that, that I've really looked at is how things dry, mm -hmm. you know, oh, um, yeah. dry fit type stuff. So you can mm -hmm. literally hand wash them if you need to, wring them out, hang them up and they're dry within a couple hours. Mm -hmm. Um, if you don't have a washing machine, if you do have a washing machine, you probably won't have a dryer in most of these places that we've been to. So things that are lightweight, that'll dry easy are kind of what I look for. Yeah. Dry. And then also don't wrinkle. And don't you wrinkle. Know? Yeah. You I grab really those. I care about the wrinkling. Much. I care about the wrinkling. Right. I, I look at things and actually while they're still on the hanger, I just go like that onto them, which I'm sure they love and appreciate in the stores. But <laughs> you immediately know when you do that, if it's already wrinkled from that, it's for sure going to wrinkle in your bag and you do not want to be ironing stuff. So pay attention to that. We also look at um, so the quality of clothing. So there are right. certain items that we spend more money on, um, a jacket, rain jackets, thing like that, things like that, that, you know, we know we want to last. We know that they're going to be good quality, but then there's a different level of stuff like certain, say you have a sweatshirt or you have a t-shirt or things that you might want to change out occasionally because you just want some new clothes. We don't put as much value on yeah, the quality of those to. clothing. Right, yeah. right. I, I like to have um, quality shorts. Mm -hmm. um, my shirts, uh, I've downscaled a little bit of my shirts, my t-shirts and whatnot, simply because uh, they're only gonna last about a year anyway because I wear them so many times. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of a fine line there. If you get cheap things, well, you're not gonna get to wear it, you know, two or three times a week 
for a year because it's not yeah. gonna last. Quality shoes. Quality shoes is mm -hmm. a good one. Socks. Uh, socks, things like that. You know, you, yeah, you think about the things that you're right. wearing all the time and like putting a lot of, you know, shoes. Wear and tear. Shoes we average eight to 10 miles right. when we're really sightseeing a town. So, you know, you think about that, if you buy a cheap pair of shoes, you're gonna be replacing them all the time anyway. So just get a good pair of those. So yeah, this is the time to kind of like find the quality of items, make sure they're light, make sure that they um, that you're packing accordingly to the weather that you're going to be going into. Okay, your toiletries, your cosmetics, your sundry items, these are all things that you need to have TSA approved in TSA approved bags. Mm -hmm. What you wanna do is you wanna figure out what it is that you're gonna use that you have to have mm -hmm. and make sure they're in the appropriate size container. Yeah, and we've really narrowed this down. We've gotten yeah. pretty darn good at when we are home, we know those key, like certain face creams, certain things that we use that we cannot replace on the road. No matter where we've traveled, we're not finding them. Those are the only things that go into right. our essentials bag now. Uh, you know, but we used to carry, sometimes I'll carry just a little thing of shampoo if we're gonna be having a stopover somewhere. Uh, but those are not things you need to carry. You can get those right. anywhere else on the road. So kind of keep all that stuff down to your just minimalist size yeah, bag. Carrie's, Carrie's TSA bag is much, more packed Mine's than mine packed is. as jam full as right. it can be. Yeah. I don't have much in mine, mm -hmm. but there are still uh, like there, you know, the old spice deodorant that I like to use. Mm -hmm. I don't find that uh, in a lot of places. Some places I have, a lot of places I haven't. I don't like the um, liquid roll on kind or the powdery white stuff. I yeah. don't like those things, but and that's that what seems, I'm finding. That's what, yeah, all yeah. of Europe. That's so what they not all of Europe, but a lot of places mm -hmm. we've been to do have those things that I can't find here at home, so I make sure I take them with me. Now, the next thing that you are going to be packing is probably your electronics and any kind of gadgets that you may have. Now, we carry a lot of things, obviously, because of what we do with YouTube and anything. So we each have laptops, we have camera gear right. and stuff. So, you know, when you're thinking about how much we've minimalized down, you might have quite a bit more room than we have because you might have, have those things in your bag. So just kind of, Think when you were buying any of these items though, you know, when we were buying our laptops, for instance, you pick up your laptop. Well, unfortunately, so many laptops are quite heavy. Mine's quite heavy, but to get what you want, right. you have that weight there. So right. just be mindful of those yeah. gadgets, yeah. the and weight. We even considered um, some of our camera gear. Um, I've gotten rid of all of my camera mm -hmm. gear since we started and yeah. I've bought new, smaller, compact camera gear. Yeah that A, works just as well, and B, is so much easier to pack, mm -hmm. and C, easier to go out and shoot video with. Right. So, so it was a, a, a three different things um, that I started that I changed in the end that I'm, I'm grateful I did because it's just made my day so much easier. Yeah, which I mean, we still, so my bag, I still do have the camera we're shooting on right now because right. for sit-down videos, we need that. But, you know, you just, Kind of the key thing to be looking at is when you're putting something in your bag, weight is a major factor because it really all adds up. It all adds up and the odds are, no matter what you put in your bag, you're gonna be over the seven kilogram mm -hmm. limit that most of these airlines have now. Don't worry about that. Pack it, get away with it, because we've only been weighed twice. Yeah. So, so we've been weighed twice and we've only had to been forced to check our bags the one time we right. chose to check them the other time. So, yeah. yeah. So with that being said, the weight restrictions, mm -hmm. don't really think about those too much. Think more about you lugging that bag around, throwing mm -hmm. them in on um, trains and planes and, and, and buses, buses and everything and, yeah. else. Think more long terms of that. So now that you've narrowed everything down to what's going to go in your bag, how are you going to pack it? Are you going to use packing cubes? Some people love packing cubes. Mm -hmm. Some people swear by packing cubes. I started with packing cubes yeah, we and got did. rid of them. Yeah. yeah. I don't care for packing cubes myself. I can't see through them. I don't know what's in each cube. I'm just not that organized, I guess. Mm -hmm. I like the roll method. Yeah. I roll and line everything up kind of like a, an accordion mm -hmm. and it works great for yeah. me. Yeah, I do more, I would call my like the file method. So mine are more folded, like very narrow and they just go in like this. And the reason that I like that and uh, we both started with the packing yeah. cubes and then quickly learned, you know, when you're at a hotel and you're only there a couple days, 
you have to get into all these different bags, no matter how organized you were going in. Like right. I'm gonna pack this bag specifically with everything I'll need for these couple days. It right. doesn't ever work that way. So you are going to have to open multiple bags, but by having it in this kind of all lined up, I can open my bag and I see all of my clothes very easily. Nothing is stacked on top of each other. So we can take our stuff out. Like an accordion. Yep, and then put it right back into that. <laughs> <laughs> <They're an accordion. laughs> and then put it right back in um, and it stays incredibly organized that way. So that's the way we do it. We do, we do still use um, our packing cubes for other things. So we use them for, right. I still use a packing cube just to put my underwear in or the small items that you know what's in it. Um, and you use some for your electronics. My, my electronics and, yeah. 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 So I think mean, they're still great to keep things organized. Right. Over, we yeah. just don't use our clothes. Not for clothes. We roll. They don't get wrinkled that way because mm -hmm. Carrie hates the wrinkles. I hate the wrinkles. You know, I don't get the wrinkles even though I don't mind them just by rolling and doing mm -hmm. the accordion thing. The final step that you are going to do, and we did this multiple times, is you are going to do some trial packing. So pack your bag, see how it looks, see, you know, because you can think when you're looking at everything that you've got it all dialed in and then you get it in that bag and it is just jam packed full. You do right. not want it jam packed full. You do want to have some extra room because I guarantee you there's going to be something that you're going to be adding to it while you're traveling. So go through a few trial and errors, narrow it down, and then you're good to go. Okay, so now you've got everything organized. You've done your, your trial packing. Mm -hmm. You think you've got it all figured out. There are some essentials that we don't leave home without, what we use, what we take. Whenever we leave, no matter what's in our bag, we've got these items. These are here. And we have narrowed this list down and like really got it, I don't know, we've got it dialed in very good yes. of what we for sure have with us. So these are our top 10 essential travel items. So the first item that we added um, a while back, and we kind of wanted to test it out before we would even talk to anybody about it, because, right. you know, we traveled to we, we traveled to a lot of different countries where we had to buy bottled water, but it was kind of hit and miss. Then we go to Southeast Asia, and we yeah. were in, that that kind of just made us sad. How many bottles of water we were throwing away the plastic bottles every day, um, and then you know on top of that, you're there, and everything that they do has plastic. So yeah, it was, um, it was heartbreaking. Actually, mm -hmm. we were actually contributing to the problem, mm -hmm. and we didn't want to do that any longer. Yeah. So and it was twofold. It was the problem, which was a huge part of it, and but it was also the cost, right? So you're having to always buy right. your water. So the one thing that we did just recently invest in is we got new water bottles. And what's cool about these ones is, is that they do have a the filter, so you can, but I did a lot of research and I found one where, because a lot of the problems people have is when you're sucking through these, um, you really have to like really suck up on it. Uh, these ones are great, so you can drink with the filter or they also have a UV cap that you can put on top that kills any of the bacteria on side, inside. You just push the button and shake the bottle around and then it does that. So we're loving these. Yeah, these yeah, I are got great. one too, I got a yeah. black one. I got a black one, she got a white one. Yeah, so even going forward, because in, in Turkey, we can drink the water right. and we were kind of, but then uh, it has a, like a metallic taste to it. So right. we're gonna be able to use these. So these we highly recommend. If you wanna check these ones out, great. We have the link down below. If you wanna go to get your own water bottle that's filtered, we just suggest you have a filtered water bottle. They're gonna come in handy in Mexico too, because mm -hmm. we we'll won't go into Mexico at the end of the year. Yeah, so what's our next item that we travel with that's essential? I don't know, you kind of sprung that out. <laughs> okay, one thing I like to use because, again, it's dry. It doesn't have to go in that TSA approved bag. I don't have to put it in a little bottle. Is I got bar shampoo mm -hmm. and conditioner that I just, I just use like a bar of soap. Mm -hmm. And I think they're great. Yeah. I don't know what other people's experiences are with them. I've heard great things about mm -hmm. them. I researched them. I like it. Now, my hair is kind of hard to mess up. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Right? So it works for me. Now, I like it because I can get through TSA, I can pack it in right. my bag, I don't have to pull it out or anything like that. That's one thing that just makes getting through that uh, security line a little bit easier. Well, in our experience also, we had been places, and so if you are, say, going somewhere where you're gonna be moving a little bit faster, so say you're at a place for a week, right? And but you you need shampoo and conditioner, and so you're buying shampoo and conditioner, well, you're throwing it away in a week because you, if you're hopping on a flight, you can't take it with you. Um, and even if you're going on a bus or something, you may not have the room for it. So right. um, it was really, even if we don't use it all the time, it 
it is so nice for all of those times that we are in a place where we don't have the opportunity to go buy um, shampoo and conditioner. Yeah, yeah, it just works out for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. yeah. Now, another new addition that we just added this last six months that we were out is a laundry detergent sheet. And they are, each little piece is just about this big. Uh, you just tear that off, toss it into the wash machine. They take up zero room in your bag. They weigh nothing. They weigh nothing. Yeah. My sister got us turned on to these. Yes. Yeah, so thank you, Sherry. Yes, that now, was these wonderful. These things are great. I didn't even know they existed. Yeah. But and so they do. We will forever be traveling with these, and honestly, you could use these at home. Once again, you are saving the plastic waste, which is wonderful. Um, they have the laundry detergent sheets, but the other thing that they have that um, is really awesome is also the softener sheets. So you can toss that in the wash as well. It's like we say, you pretty much never have a dryer, and so you kind of sacrifice that nice soft feeling to I your like clothes. So clothes. we like that. Yeah. We like the soft smell yeah. good, and so yeah. So we highly recommend those as well. So now we've mentioned it a couple times before, get through that security line with ease. The TSA liquid bags, mm -hmm. they're quart size. You put your liquids in there. Once mm -hmm. that's full, you stop. I've had a TSA agent pull mine out, look at it, and put it back on my bag. Without question, the person next to me had a quart size Ziploc bag. He gave her a new one and made her empty her stuff out into his mm -hmm. bag. And that slowed the line down. Yeah. I chuckled. I was like, <laughs> I'd have to worry about it because I had one of these. Well, and the beauty of these, you know, and, and I guess I don't really understand why people don't get them is that you can fit so much more in these TSA approved bags yeah. than what you can fit in a quart size bag because a quart size bag is narrow and kind of goes up where this is solid straight all the way up. up. Yeah, and you can stand up your stuff in it. And so highly recommend, super inexpensive. Now, the other thing that we travel with or that I travel with uh, that will not leave home without is a eye mask. Now, <laughs> I use this eye mask everywhere we go because it never fails. Whatever Airbnb, hotel, cruise ship, <laughs> wherever you are, there is going to be some different light. It's going to be on the air conditioning light. unit. Yeah. It's going to be the little peephole that was in our... Uh, uh, the cruise room door, yeah, there's you know, all kinds of little lights everywhere. And I'm so sensitive to that because, you know, and so those little things like when I'm trying to go to sleep and so I just have this and it's great. You can have on the airplane when you're ready one. to go I, to sleep. I should get one. I passed up the opportunity to buy one at Hoi An. Mm -hmm. It was going to cost me like $8. The price, he keeps having the price go up. I believe it was $4 and it was a really nice yeah, soft bamboo bun. I should have got it. I, che <laughs> I cheaped out. Don't ah, cheap out. Just $4. get one. I have had the same one. We have this linked on our website on oh. our essential travel items. And I have had the same one now for I think eight years. Oh, and I... It gets washed all the time oh. and it's it's silk, super soft, whatever. So I, I would recommend one. this one because it's held up one. great. I'm going to get one before we leave. He's not going to. He likes to say that. Okay, this next one might sound a little funny. Now, we use it all the time. Slow traveling. We get close to grocery stores. We cook our meals at home. Mm -hmm. Now, we have heard people say that they use their backpacks mm -hmm. or they take their luggage with them to the grocery store. We don't want to do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't be that guy. Get one of these. They pack down really easy. They're shopping bags, reusable shopping bags. And I'll tell you what, they're sturdy, they're heavy duty. Mm -hmm. You're not, you're probably going to want to get two. Yeah, we each have one now yeah. because um, every place you go, you're paying for your, your bags. And once again, going down onto that line of just saving plastic saving and stuff. Plastic. So this is just something that every day that when we leave our hotel or our Airbnb, it's always in our bag. So it's in my purse or it's in your little bag. Right. Um, and we just always have it with they'll, us. They'll so. hold, uh, these are strong <laughs> enough to hold two six packs of beer. They've so been they, tried, tested. They won't, and... they won't break. <laughs> so they're kind of handy. Yeah. So definitely get those. Uh, the other thing that I 100% highly recommend, and I know that I've gotten a lot of feedback from people that have watched our channel and gotten these, that they love it. It is called the Makeup Eraser. It is just a basically a special kind of washcloth. I don't know what they do with it, but you do not have to use those face wipes and waste, once again, a bunch of room in your bag that you don't have, but also money buying these that you're just gonna be throwing into the garbage. This water, no soap, nothing, and you just wash your face with it and it works amazing. It's like one of those magic 
magic erasers for your face. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. <laughs> but they last you a long time too, so I just replaced mine. I went two and a half years with the same one. I don't highly suggest that. It got a little bit not so soft, so this one feels amazing. So maybe a year and a half would be a good golden point. <laughs> okay, earbuds. You're on the airplane. You want the kind that actually plug in. Mm -hmm. The kinds that go in your ears. We have those too for other things, but when I'm on an airplane, I want the ones with the cables on them because I tend to drop my uh, my bud and then I'm crawling mm -hmm. right under the seat. It's embarrassing. I don't want to have to do that. These are carries. I don't like carries because she doesn't have the flat cord and they get all tangled up. So don't do They're this. <laughs> don't be like Carrie. <laughs> yeah, don't okay? be like Carrie. <laughs> get the flat ones and they don't tangle up. They'll work forever. I love mine. Well, and you know, they'll give you the ones on the airplane too, but those are horrible and they hurt your ears. And I'm sorry, unless it's like a couple hour flight, when I'm going to have those things in my ears for upward of eight hours, I want a nice comfortable pair that's mine. So yeah, definitely just invest in, I mean, they're like, what, $12 for just a basic yeah. pair of plug-in kind. So get those. Now, the other thing that I have, I started carrying, it's probably about six months into our travels. And now I just live by this. Um, I have an essentials bag that I carry and I put anything that I am going to need on a flight was originally the plan. But now what it is, it's, it's my bag that is that I take out out of my bag, my, like my backpack, right? That's under the seat. And I have that out in front of me in the airplane and it has everything. It has my eye mask, it has my headphones, it has my charging cord for my phone. It has everything that you might possibly need. It has earplugs, anything you can think of. And that's in here. But then also when I get to the Airbnb, this comes out and it just goes to my side of the bed. Uh, same thing. It's just everything that you would need right by the side of the bed. So this has been a lifesaver. Okay, one thing you might want to use if you're using your cell phone for video or for just out taking pictures. We're going to Dublin here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Now we have a GoPro that we're using right now for a lot of that outside stuff. But if you want to keep your stuff dry, you need to get yourself a waterproof pack bag mm -hmm. for your cell phone. Yeah. They make them for cell phones. You can go snorkeling with them or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, we did carry them in the beginning. We carried, Before we got the GoPro. Yeah, well, and we I still carry mine all the time because we've used it. We were in Thailand and we were in kayaks and we right. were in uh, right. Vietnam and in the kayaks as well. And, you know, so I carry mine anytime that we're going on a beach. Um, I'll have my phone Insta, in that. So you need yeah. it for that, right? Right. So I always have that with me. Um, and the beauty of it is, first off, it's super inexpensive. But second off, it takes up absolutely no room in your bag because it just sits at the very bottom right. flat as can be. So that's just an easy addition to have. Okay, so that kind of covers our top 10 travel essentials. Uh, but now we also have a couple of electronics that we carry that uh, we just will not leave home without. And our first one is the universal power adapter. So you are going to need to plug things in and that is going to change. The adapter is going to change for every country that you're in. Uh, so you, the one that we carry is kind of a package that has everything in it. So it has right. adapters for all over the world. Now, when we are leaving to go, because like we said, we do leave some stuff at my daughter's house. We will go through and I, and I will look and see, okay, we're going to this country, this country, this country, which adapters do we need to carry this time? So we will just carry those ones with us. Right. But and sometimes it's, it's only great. one adapter, mm -hmm. but if you're going from Southeast Asia to Europe, you're going to need multiple adapters mm -hmm. for those regions of the world. Yeah. So, uh, they, I mean, it's been a lifesaver for us. It's been great and uh, just an easy way to do it. The little back piece just pops off and then you put in the new adapter. It has two plugins. It has a USB adapters on there right. and, and really affordable. And we've both been using, we both, we each have one uh, and we've been using that since we started traveling yeah. without issue. That was something that we got because we thought we might need, but we really weren't sure. Mm -hmm. we, we, we were kind of sure, but we were, we need it. Thank we goodness it we had time. it. Yeah. Well, otherwise you're buying a separate power adapter, like a full fledged, you know, piece for each place you're going. Right. And that's going to take up a lot more room in your bag. Okay. Something else we use a lot of the time are battery chargers, mm -hmm. the portable batteries. You know, when you're out with your cell phone, it's starting to die on you, especially my cell phone because it's like six years old now. So it doesn't hold a battery very long. I can just take the little cord, keep it plugged in the whole day. Mm -hmm. um, buses, a lot of the times they have the little, plug in <laughs> but it doesn't always work it's like a 50 50. yeah yes yeah, so you want one of these most of the airplanes now do have mm -hmm. uh, power for your phones mm -hmm. uh, but make sure you have 
some power well, when think, you're out even just around. our our long travel like our excursion days right. when we are going to be doing a lot of really fun things seeing a lot of cool things I want to make sure my phone has charge because that is my main that's my camera right and so we will take one of the battery chargers with us in our backpack just to make sure we don't run because that would be a real bummer. It's like halfway through bummer. the day and it's you don't have your camera. It's also a sense of security. You're like, I mm -hmm. can just take pictures all day long. Right. Don't have You're to You're not worry having about to be it. Yeah, cautious. I got power. Right. Power's a great thing. <laughs> it is a great thing. Now, another thing that we carry, and we actually carry two of these because we were caught with one having a problem and we have learned that it's just worth carrying a backup because they take up no room. So we do have the fire stick. Uh, we use this in every location we've been in. We have yet to find a location where it doesn't work because some people have asked us that, like if you had problems with fire stick right. working. Uh, once again, make sure you have a VPN uh, because when you are maybe using it for your Netflix, uh, you are going to need to put your VPN and to make sure you're seeing the shows that you like. Uh, the other thing about the Fire Stick that I would recommend, and the one that we do have listed as our top essentials on our website, is the one that does have this special adapter. Often when you get to an Airbnb, the TV is going to be mounted up against the wall and you are not going to be able to plug this straight in and have it sticking out from the back like that. So if you have this on there, this will bend and then you can plug it in wherever right. you need to. They do come with this one. You just want to make sure you get the one that has this extra adapter to it. Okay, now we do some work from home with our YouTube and other areas. So we're kind of sitting there kind of working a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And we like a little background music, mm -hmm. so we do have a portable speaker. You can you can pick one of these up for you know you can get a good one for seventy nine bucks, a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. um, this is a Bose. I think it cost me a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I had a fifty dollar gift card, so mm -hmm. fifty dollars off. Yeah. But you can get any brand you want. They're they're really handy. They don't take up much room in your bag. Once again, and you just. Uh, Wi-Fi to your phone and, and play music in the background. Play Pandora. And, yeah. yeah. Once again, got to have VPN for that. <laughs> By the way, VPN, Pandora, yeah. Pandora does not work outside of the country, but that has been something that we use, I would say, almost every, every single day. day we have that going, even in hotel rooms. So I wouldn't say it's necessarily, a, you know, because we're home working. I think when you're home and you just kind of want to have some background music, right. it's really a nice thing to have. I wouldn't call it an essential, but it's something we like to have. Okay, well, we hope that this helped you from the point of getting your downsizing starting started uh, through that process and then figuring out your minimalist packing and some of those essentials that you have to get into that bag uh, and just kind of starts you on that process of getting ready for full-time travel. And I can guarantee whatever you do, however you choose to do it, it's going to change. Figure it out what works for you. Always changes. Yep. All right. We'll catch you next time. Cheers. Cheers.